Hi there, Dr. John Thompson for Extract Lab. How are you guys doing today? So today we're gonna to be talking about how to select equipment for GMP operations. And then we're gonna go over you know, the equipment requirements, which are the, in the Q7 very quickly, and then show you a matrix of how the Q7 relates to equipment. Before we get started, I just wanna invite you to check out our resources page on our website. We have podcasts, product tours, mini courses, guides, calculators, whole reservoir of self-serve educational information so that you guys can educate yourself on the scientific aspects of extraction, distillation, solvent removal, and the overall process. So this is the process you typically would follow for selecting equipment, commissioning the equipment, qualifying the equipment. It really starts off with the URS, which is called the User Requirement Specification. Sometimes your vendor can help you with templates for these, like Extract Lab, and we do. We have different templates that we've already made up when we interact with various pharmaceutical companies. And so we have URSs for you. Now you're gonna to have to add in your own items related to risk assessment, your own critical process parameters, your own critical quality attributes that will affect the URS. And you need to add those in addition to what we give you. Then you typically go through a system classification process. Where does the equipment fit in with your systems in your design space? And there's a whole process associated with that. We're not gonna get into the details at this moment, but just suffice it to say, you really need to understand does your system and does your equipment have a critical, does it have an impact? Is it a direct impact A no impact? You need to define that and define all the parameters and how that's gonna to relate to your facility. Third thing is really the system risk assessment that you need to do. And the ICH has produced wonderful documentation on how to conduct that, not only in the development process, the Q8, but also in the Q9, which is the risk assessment, and also in the Q7. So you should take a look at those documents and really run a risk assessment that will provide a scientific rationale for your URS and also for your system classification. And then obviously your commissioning, qualification, and testing document. You can see these are the four key things that you need to do in order to select the right equipment. And obviously if you do this, you'll be able to traceability of your commissioning documents back to your URS, which is the key thing. You have to develop and demonstrate a scientific rationale for the selection validation of your equipment and how it relates to your CPPs and your CQAs. So these are the things that you need to be thinking about, but obviously you can go through an acceptance and release. Now, one thing that's not in this general flow chart is if you have modifications to the equipment, then you need to do a design qualification aspect. You need to add that into this process and then do a design review. This is a very well-known thing and you, you can do that with your vendor, but you're responsible essentially for that process of creating a design qualification, going through the design review and then doing the risk assessment on that. So this is a direct copy and paste from the ICHQ7 sections 1.51 all the way to 1.56. And you can see here, that uh, there's a lot of different items here that you need to be thinking about when you select equipment. And these items here, and you can see I've under, underlined some of them, they can be put into a matrix and tested versus the equipment that you're gonna buy. I'm gonna do that in the next slide, but you should really read through this. It, it really shows you, hey, look, your equipment has to have the right seals. It has to be the appropriate design within the right ranges. And you should really think about uh, containment systems. In other words, continuous systems. So you're reducing or eliminating uh, external contamination. Um, you should be thinking about possibilities of internal contamination. Those all come from your risk assessment. So this is just some guidelines on the equipment. I'm not gonna go through all these in detail. I'm gonna go through them in detail in a subsequent uh, podcast. And I invite you to sign up for that podcast. So this table is an example of how you would evaluate your equipment versus the requirements in the ICHQ7 5, 5.01 to the 5.7 plus the Annex 11 or Part 11. And there's other requirements that would go into this. It's kind of a very basic traceability matrix. And normally when someone refers to a traceability matrix, they're talking about taking the commissioning requirements and the data that comes out that and then going back to your URS and, and checking it off and making sure that it's all traceable. In this 
this case, we're just looking at traceability of the equipment to the actual regulation. You can see here in our extraction to distillation continuous system, we have evaluated this continuous system versus just an individual extractor and individual distillation system. You can see where it really stands out is compliance with ICH 5.14, which is a suggestion that you ought to be giving continuous systems a priority over discontinuous systems. And that's because it's better because it reduces the contamination um, this is the ICH 5.10, and you can see design specification matches intended use. It's appropriate design that you have uh, USP class 4. Um, this is, has to do with the internal contamination or lack thereof. No API contact with lubricants and surface finish compliance. So these are all things that have to do with the cleanability and internal contamination. You can see that our equipment really matches all of that. Zero or indirect impact utilities, which is the second thing for 5.13. Um, and then in 5.14, we start to talk about uh, containment and process containment, minimal quality touch points, minimal external contamination risk clean out of place, clean in place interfaces, total closed loop operations. And this is really where that continuous extraction to distillation system really shines. By the way, if you haven't heard about that uh, continuous extraction to distillation operation, please give us a call, reply to this email, ask for a quote, We'll get you the information that you need. And then the 5.2 and the 5.23 and uh, part 11, this has to do with data, data requirements. I'm not gonna go over this in detail at the moment. Uh, just suffice it to say that it's very important that you evaluate those items versus your equipment that you're gonna use. The good news is if you wanna take some time with this topic, and really dig in deep with me. We're going to give a webinar here, um, also known as a podcast, where we're going to go in pretty deep on each of these topics, what it takes to do a URS development, what the requirements are, what the risk assessment is. We're going to do an overview on that, system classifications, commissioning qualification operations, traceability matrix, and commissioning and quality planning, C&Q planning, commission and qualification planning. So if you want to do that, uh, we'll give you a link here to sign up. We would be very pleased if you were to join. So this has been John Thompson for Extract Lab. I hope you enjoyed our quick overview of the requirements. Please join us for the webinar. Look at our continuous extraction to distillation systems, and you guys take care. Bye now.